Is God for me or is God against me? In the first 27 chapters of the book of Job, the most emotional, dramatic chapter is, I think, chapter 19. And it's worth us stopping, pausing and reflecting on on Daily Bible Time this Monday morning. Dominic Steele here. Thanks for joining us. Chapters 4 to 27 of Job is a back and forth, a debate between Job and the three so-called comforters. And we've seen in these chapters, in Job, the marks of a believer. There is for him a pain that this world ought to be well ordered and yet seems to him to be so terribly wrong and there's a passionate longing for the God who is or from his perspective ought to be ruling the world and those two characteristics Ash points out issue forth in Job in a life of both pain and passionate prayer. At the heart of it is a felt tension between the God who it seems to him is running the world and the one that he hopes and trusts is actually running the world. And you know what? I've felt that tension at times and I suspect you might have felt that tension at times. Job is asking the question in his desperation, is God for me or against me? And and the question that stands behind that question is, why is all this happening? Why the virus? Why the dementia in my friend? Why the marriage breakdown? Why the complexity? At the critique of God, it actually comes up in uh, in Job chapter 19, verse 21. He, he cries out to his friends, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Now, you read that line and you, God's hand has touched me. Is that right? No. In chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, Satan asks the Almighty to stretch out his hand. But the Lord replies, Behold, Job is in your hand. The hands that destroyed Job's possessions and killed Job's children, wrecked Job's health, they're not the hands of God. They're the hands of Satan. It was the hand of Satan acting within the strict constraints given by the Lord, but it was Satan's hand, not God's hand, that did those terrible things. Now that's key. Again and again, Satan masquerades as God, persuades Job that it is directly the Lord who has turned against him. Now the friends, they have no place in their theology for Satan and Job starts to doubt, to wonder who is behind this suffering. But the statement of Job 19.21 that's not the last word because just a few seconds a few verses later when Job is listen to what he says in verse 25 I know that my redeemer lives and at last he'll stand upon the earth and after my skin has thus been destroyed yet in my flesh I shall see God whom I'll see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another my heart faints within me Job is saying, I thought for a moment that God was against me and firing arrows at me, but now I know that's not right. You know what I know is right? I know my Redeemer lives. So two thoughts to conclude. I relate. I've had those moments where in my anguish about a particular thing, I've thought things, said things, that in my better moments, they're not my settled position. And actually, that's what's going to be like in a up and down of a relationship like the one a creature might have with their creator and secondly Job speaks of a redeemer Job knows he needs a redeemer he's done nothing worth of the catastrophe that's befallen him but he like you and me is in need of redemption he needs a redeemer so we read in Romans 3 speaking of Jesus Paul writes of Jesus redeeming the sins that were committed beforehand Chapter 3, verse 25, God presented him as a mercy seat by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his restraint, God had passed over the sins previously committed. God had passed over sins. They weren't actually redeemed until the Jesus event, until Jesus died and paid for them. But Job's redeemer, he now lives and Job has seen him with his eyes. Join us this Sunday at Village for reopening Sunday, 9.30 in the morning and 6 p.m. Sunday, July 5.